coming up in Newark, New Jersey. But that million dollar smile and Olympic glory is always present. For tonight only, fans, you can play in a free top ranked boxing pool on DraftKings Sportsbook. It's a shot at five grand. You answer a series of questions on tonight's world championship fight. Get enough of them correct, you're going to take home your share of $5,000. Just download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, sign up with promo code ROPES. Past few years, we have seen Shakur blossom as a pro. Mark, he has grown from a top prospect who was perhaps shy and hesitant to trust the media and the promotional machinery, but now a two-division world champion who's confident, who's camera-friendly, and boldly opinionated. I don't ever remember him uh, shy to express his opinion. When we sat down, I, I asked Shakur who the best fighter in the world was, not resume, just talent. Me, he says, of course, that sets off an instant debate, but it obscures the larger point, which is you can't get where you want to be if you don't think of yourself in precisely that way. Shakur Stevenson is proving that he's next level. This kid was the future of boxing. Rank the best five fighters in the world today. Um, if you're not talking accolades, I'm going to give you my, my answer. My answer would be Shakur Stevenson. Number one? Number one. Bud Crawford. Mm -hmm. Jerron Ennis. Canelo Alvarez. Tank or Earl Spence for the last fight. You put yourself at number one. Yeah. I understand you have to believe that. Tell me why. It ain't that I have to believe that. I actually believe I'm the best fighter in the sport of boxing. I'm very dominant, so. You see me in fights where it's like, 10 to 2 or 11 to 1, and I feel like that makes me the best fighter in the sport of boxing. Do you think you should be on the pound for pound list already? Nah, I don't think so. Should this fight put you in the pound for pound rankings? Yes, I think this fight definitely put me in the pound for pound rankings. Depending on how I perform is where I'm at on the pound for pound list. What will this fight do for Shakur Stevenson? I think this fight gonna turn me to a superstar. I feel like a lot of people gonna be tuned in on this fight. A lot of people may, they might make me the favorite, but a lot of people don't really understand how good I am and they don't understand how badly that I can beat up Oscar Valdez. He's a dog, like, he's somebody who don't take no for an answer. He won't quit, he wanna punch you, you punch him, and see who punched the hardest. And I'm just not that guy for the job that he think that we about to go in there and do. I feel like, um, this is the biggest fight of my life. I'm definitely focused, and at the end of the day, once we fight, after I beat him up, the world gonna look at me different. Okay, it's taken five years, fellas, but I've finally found Shakur's weakness. The thing that keeps him up at night, changing diapers. Shakur and his girlfriend, Lyric, had a baby girl, Leilani, on December 6th. Got a lot more motivation to fight for when that first child comes. But I'll say this about the peace, Mark. Shakur Stevenson is cut from the cloth of the old greats in respects to or with respects to his willingness to want to fight the best. It's one thing to say I'm the, the best young fighter in the world or I'm the best fighter in the world behind a wall or in your, in, in your corner. It's something else to come to the, to the forefront and toe the line and says, does anybody want to prove me wrong? That's what Shakur Stevenson is doing tonight. What are we going to see in Timmy's lab? Tell us what to look for. Well, I'm going to tell you what to look for. And don't be surprised. First of all, this is what I need you to do. I need you to look at how many punches Valdez throws in this sequence right here. I saw one right there. But you see what Kase Sal is doing. He's controlling range, controlling distance, letting his hands go out at distance. And you see Valdez having to reset over and over. That's the second punch right there. Well, I'm here to tell you folks, this is something that Shakur Stevenson can do, and he can do it all night. And he did it in his last fight, outside pressure, controlling range from the outside, using his jab, being defensively sound, technically sound, moving forward, controlling that space between him and his opposition, and banging on Jamel Herring. Now they saying that Shakur has no punching power. Then why the heck is Jamel Herring moving back? Huh, I'm telling you right now, don't be surprised if you see Shakur Stevenson walking down Valdez at some point during this fight. If he does that, 
if he has that kind of spectacular ending. And you're becoming a unified champ. Sky's the limit. Shakur Stevenson patiently waiting. And look who has arrived ringside. The great Canelo Alvarez, who is the closest friend and training stablemate of the world champion Oscar Valdez. This night means the world to Canelo. You talk to folks in the camp, you talk to those close to Valdez, and they say it's Canelo who encouraged him to get this fight. Valdez talked to his manager as well, but everybody in the camp said, he's got to stop talking. He's saying, you're ducking him. That's not the case. Valdez, Canelo, Reynoso, the famed trainer, Espinosa. This is what they want now, and this is what they will get. And look at the attention that Canelo gets, and a week from tonight, he will be having his own Grand Vegas appearance when he fights for a light heavyweight championship against Dimitri Bivol. We are moments away from the ring walk, and yet is Canelo, who looks like he's having his own ring walk as he is absolutely adored. Number one on the pound for pound list, and how about that shot? There is Devin Haney. The undefeated American who is going to fight on ESPN for the undisputed lightweight championship of the world against the power punching George Cambosis on Saturday night, June 4th. So as Canelo will take his seat alongside Raiders owner Mark Davis and top rank Hall of Fame promoter Bob Arum, we go to the ring for the national anthems with Mark Chinook. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, before we walk the champions to the ring, we ask you to please rise for the singing of the Mexican and American national anthems. Here to perform the Mexican national anthem, please welcome recording artist Pepe Gutierrez. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el bridón, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Siño patria, tú sienes de oliva, de la paz el arcángel divino, que en el cielo tu eterno destino por el dedo de Dios se escribió. Mas si os haré un extraño enemigo, profanar con su planta tu suelo. Pienso, patria querida, que el cielo un soldado en cada hijo te dio. Un soldado en cada hijo te dio. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el bridón. Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. ¡Viva México! Y ni una... Pepe Gutiérrez. And now to perform the Star Spangled Banner, please welcome recording artist Brandon Brigham. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the realm past we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets. 
the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave? For the land of the free and the home of the brave. This MGM Grand Garden Arena has been home to some of boxing's bravest for many years, whether it's Pacquiao or De La Hoya or Mayweather in Holyfield. And now the names to know Stevenson and Valdez. And they get after it with everything on the line next. Oscar don't lay down. Like you could tell he got a don't lay down mentality. A lot of people look at it like uh, he's not confident, but I look at it like I know he's going in there to whoop me. Like he's go gonna try his hardest and do whatever he can to beat me. <laughs> at the end of the day, when I go in the ring, I'm gonna make sure I give him my all. <laughs> I put in the work, I did what I was supposed to do. <laughs> I don't care how this go, I'm gonna make sure that it go my way. Time for the whole world to see who I actually am. This is the biggest fight in boxing. And you got two champions putting it all on the line. Belt versus belt. And a lot to lose. I feel like it's the best fight in boxing. And I'm Oscar can't keep ducking. It's time for him to fight. He's been mentioning my name several times. And we've never been scared of fighting no other fighter. Fans wanted this fight, I'm gonna give them this fight. I think this fight definitely put me in a pound for pound rankings. I just feel like I'm on a whole nother level. He sees everything coming. At the end of the day, we all have a dream to become the best. And new. It's gonna be a masterclass performance by me. Shakur floors him again! I believe I'm that type of fighter that can make you seriously question if you want it or not. Cause that's what a warrior does. I don't care how this go. I'm going to make sure that it go my way. Here he comes. This fight going to turn me to a superstar. There's no easy fight when you're fighting a guy like me. Oh! It's the fight that will determine who is the best in 130 pounds. Junior Lightweight World Championship unification from here in Vegas. You have to go back to the great Marco Antonio Barrera in 2005, the last time we had a unified champion, 130 pounds. So everybody in sports wants to be here. Mark Davis, Raiders owner, he has been ringside for hours. He comes to see all the fights. Amari Cooper is ringside. We saw Zeke Elliott make his way in not long ago. There is Zeke. Tyrone Liu has settled in to see Valdez and Stevenson. Fighters love fighters. There is Nate Diaz. He came in a little earlier. Speaking of fighters, a world champion who knows how good Shakur Stevenson is. Jamel Herring, who lost his title to Stevenson. Devin Haney flanking Bob Arum, the Hall of Fame promoter. By the way, amazing feature piece on ESPN.com on Aram saying Aram is still the boss of all bosses was the headline. Winky Wright, a Hall of Famer, coming out to the big fight in Vegas. Terrence Bud Crawford, the welterweight champion who was asked about fighting Errol Spence a little earlier by Bernardo. And Canelo Alvarez who had a huge ovation when he entered. He will be rooting on this man, Oscar Valdez who's been very emotional in the lead up to this fight, not to be misunderstood. He's that fragile in any way, just boiling up with a lot of emotion 
He was so effective in the lead up to his last fight. A performance he admits was below his standard. Says he cared too much about what his critics were saying. He describes this as a go for it, do or die moment, a fight in which he's willing to give everything. His record does not have a loss on it, but as you know, his path has not been easy. But he feels all that experience will be the edge tonight. And now the 24-year-old and already a two-division world champion. The man who for years all the boxing experts carefully watched to see if anything would take him off course. Nothing has. Shakur Stevenson ready for his ring walk. Question's always been, how do you go about the business of constantly getting better when you've been tabbed as the next great one? I know you don't love me. We love it all. Let me get in trouble. You know what Time and again, Shakur Stevenson keeps placing that sharpened sword he has into the raging fire. And you hear the cascade of boos for a very pro Valdez crowd. But this is a guy who is so confident because of his maniacal relentlessness of training. But now comes the moment. These are typically the moments when Shakur lets the world know when his bravado, his confidence, and of course that million watt smile can just take over. So two world champions, two undefeated world champions. So there was a coin toss the other day to determine the running order that you're seeing. Shakur had the honor of the champs ring walk second. So now it'll be Valdez who gets the champs position introduction. Here's Mark Chinook. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside the MGM Grand Garden Arena here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. This is boxing. This is Top Rank. Presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Mr. Bob Arum. Sponsored by Boost Mobile, Money is Power, and by Top Gun Maverick starring Tom Cruise only in theaters May 27th. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman Steven J. Klubeck, Executive Director, Mr. Jeff Mullen, our ringside physicians, Raimundo Leon, David Ober, Jay Coates, and Joseph Heflin. Our timekeepers this evening, Steve Esposito and Steve Mazzagatti. Our judges at ringside, Tim Cheatham, Dave Moretti, and Davis Sutherland. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Kenny Bayless. And now, to everyone in attendance here inside MGM Grand Garden Arena. And to everyone watching on ESPN. This is boxing. This is top rank. And no. Junior Light 
Heavyweight Championships of the World! <laughs> Introducing first, out of the blue corner, presented in association with Antonio Leonard Promotions. He weighed in at 130 pounds, wearing gray trunks with gold trim. He brings a perfect record into the ring. 17 victories, no defeats. Nine victories coming by way of knockout. He is the 2016 Olympic silver medalist, the former featherweight champion of the world, the reigning and defending WBO junior lightweight champion of the world, representing Brick City, Newark, New Jersey, Shakur Stevenson! Introducing out of the red corner, he weighed in at 129.6 pounds, wearing blue trunks with silver trim. He brings a perfect record into the ring. 30 wins, no defeats, 23 victories by way of knockout. He is a two-time Mexican Olympian, making his 10th world title appearance. He is the former featherweight champion of the world. He is the reigning, defending WBC junior lightweight champion of the world from Nogales, Sonora, Mexico, Oscar Valdez. What a scene, and what a roar. Okay, we went over the rules in this one. Trunks are good on this side, trunks are good on this side. I want you to protect yourself at all times. Keep this fight clean at all times. And what I say, you must obey. Good luck, touch them up. During one of their final face-offs, when these two undefeated champions were able to speak to and really through to their rival, Shakur Stevenson said to Oscar Valdez, you know it's a code you gotta crack. So does this proud Mexican warrior try to crack the code with a sledgehammer attack? Or are we about to see the first major mountaintop conquered in what many feel will be a career headed to the highest heights for Shakur Stevenson? Here we go. Round one. Joe Tessitore, Tim Bradley, Andre Ward on the call. The two undefeated, the junior lightweight unification fight. Now, you can't help but take in the roar, the charged up Mexican and Mexican-American fight fans, Dre. Oscar Valdez said to us yesterday, I have to stay controlled, I have to stay disciplined, I have to stick to the plan. Does the emotion of this crowd perhaps impact that? It very well can because this is the biggest crowd that Oscar Valdez has fought in front of. It's a pro Valdez crowd as we just heard. And he's the one that has to make sure that he doesn't get outside of himself and go back to his old ways of making mistakes like we just saw and getting countered by a superb counterpuncher like Shakur Stevenson. With that backhand, Timmy, the southpaw power hand, Valdez hasn't fought a southpaw since June of 2015. Yeah, that'd be a problem, but you know what? He trained for Southpaws. He had an eight-week camp to get ready for Southpaw, so that's no excuse tonight for Oscar Valdez. Oh, oh he lunges in. Valdez comes in and misses as Shakur backed up, and he slips to the canvas. Look, Valdez Shakur landed a shot as Valdez was going down. I like the thinking and the mindset from Shakur. If he misses, I have to make him pay. Valdez needs to be smart, use feints, head movement, level changes, and his jab while applying pressure. 
And he also needs to make adjustments every two rounds because he's in there with a master chess player. Steady diet of that southpaw right hand Rip. jab from Shakur. And there is the movement. And the body control of Stevenson defensively. He is superb defensively. His opponents land only five punches per round. Valdez is doing the right thing, trying to put pressure on Shakur with his presence and his footwork, but he needs to come behind the jab. He can't have both hands up the way that he does in this peekaboo style because Shakur Stevenson will pick him apart all feet. night long. Speaking of the peekaboo style, you see him leaning forward over that front knee. You know, that's going to allow Shakur to just hey, pepper him with jabs all night long. Left hand to the body, back to the jab. Right uppercut to the body. Three punch combination, doubled up the jab. Left backhand from Shakur Stevenson. Now he tries to work to the inside again. Trying to cut off a little bit of space and get to the inside. There goes Valdez. Stevenson calm and in control. Managing this first round. End of one. Two. Oscar Valdez, six of 31. Stevenson had five body connects in that first round. Five punches landed to Oscar Valdez's body. Well, if you're Oscar Valdez, you got to know, and you had to have accounted for the fact that Shakur is going to touch you and you're going to get hit, but he cannot get discouraged. He has to keep. Pressing forward little by little, letting his offense go more and more. And Valdez should be banking on the second half of this fight, hopefully either tied 3-3 or down 4-2, somewhere around there where he can make his push. Valdez has to come in behind something. He's not going to close the gap just putting a high guard up and just moving his head. He has to give Shakur something to look at so he can react, and then he needs to react. He needs to be first and also last when he's attacking Shakur Stevenson. Look how big Shakur is. He wouldn't tell us what he walks around at, but you could see it's a lot bigger than Oscar Valdez. This is a different guy than the kid we saw come up five years ago after the Olympics. Shakur just buzzed Oscar Valdez with that overhand left. And if, uh, if, if Shakur starts to hurt Valdez, it's going to be big problems for Valdez because that's not the storyline coming into this fight. The storyline is Shakur outboxing and being slick and moving away. That's not the case right now. If he starts to hurt Valdez, it's going to be big, big trouble for Valdez and his team. Three-punch combination from Shakur moments ago. Valdez is making it easy for Shakur. This is target practice right now. Yes, not everything is getting in. But Valdez doing the right thing right there. He threw a left hook and then came behind that left hook with the right hand down to the body. Forget right about the head right the now. Body. Forget about the head right now. Go to the body. Still that Valdez high guard as he inches out. forward. Now he does come behind the jab. And Shakur returns fire with a straight left. And a two-punch combination. Southpaw 1-2. Yeah. Valdez has to sell out. He's got to take more risk. I'm not saying oh. get reckless, but you, he's got to sell out and put himself in a position to let his shots go like you see right there, knowing that he's going to get hit, but believing that he's going to get his shots through in between the shots of Shakur. Good work to the body from Oscar Valdez. Valdez is setting off that angle to the right. He's throwing that body shot. Forget about the head. He's going down to the body and cutting off Shakur. If he can cross that threshold and get to the body, he will find success. He did so moments ago. Stevenson fighting, backing up. Lands with that right hook. Goes to the body. End of two. Good fight. <laughs> Doritos flaming hot on Beto's wings. Now that's fire. They won't be here long, though, just like the playoffs. Speaking of, shouldn't you be focused right now? I am focused. I'm watching film. I'm eating wings. Let me live. Clay, was that a shimmy? <laughs> because you're forever connected by love. Two touching center diamonds representing the connection you share. This Mother's Day, celebrate with the Forever Connected Collection. Only at K. Meet Renee, Bank Manager and Mom of the Year. 
But when she gets on her bike, she becomes Rebel Renee. Rebel Renee is the most outspoken member of her book club. And she didn't even read the book. It's rumored she once used her phone at trivia night. Cleveland! And she isn't above greasing some palms to get things done. And Rebel Renee rides with Geico, because savings and great service are two things she'd never rebel against. Geico, savings and service for both your sides. Beginning of round number three. Junior lightweight unification, the two undefeated champions. Shakur Stevenson with a 23 to 11 connect advantage. He had a 14 to 5 connect advantage in that second round. Valdez had moments, the two body punches that were landed. Bernardo, what are they saying in the corner of Oscar Valdez? Eddie Reynoso was very clear. He said, I want you to focus on working the body. You're cutting off the angle, but don't worry about the head so much. That's going to be hard to hit, but the body is there. But don't let him hit you to the head. You got to get off by angles. Exactly what our two division world champion Tim Bradley said he needed to do. And he does so there. Takes that angle, lands the left hook to the body. Shakur turns out of it. Back to the jab. Straight right Woo! hand now from Valdez as he says, let's go. That's it. Double and triple right hands. That's something that Shakur hasn't seen. That's not a normal combination. Getting away from that right hand. Good upper head movement from Shakur Stevenson. Good counter. And then separating Good counter. with the right hook. He made Valdez pay for that big miss, and Shakur has to do that every chance he gets. And Valdez can't allow that to detour him. He's got to keep pressing. Valdez is going to keep pressing all night long. He's going to be in this fight until the end. No doubt in my mind. He's a warrior. And see a red mark on the forehead of Valdez, just above his right eye. We've seen Valdez be a warrior. He needs to be a winner tonight. And if he can win and find a way to get this, this, this win tonight, trust Woo! me, he'll show, he'll show plenty moments where he's a warrior, but he needs to win tonight. As Shakur backed up against the ropes, Valdez did place another right hand to the body. But Shakur back at range, back at comfort. Watch that right hand come off the hip. This is a great round right here for Oscar Valdez. So far, perfect round right here. Closing the distance fast, cutting off the angles by digging down to the body, throwing double right hands, lead right hands, jabs, and getting Shakur Stevenson back on his back foot, activating his feet, like I said. Cutting off the ring is critical if Valdez is going to have any success. Taking those angles, going lateral while going forward, and working to the body. Instead now, it's Shakur in position. And with it, he fires off a three-punch combination. Valdez can't let Shakur steal the play. He's up in this round, but if he lets Shakur close it strong, Shakur can pull away Ooh. and close this round out. Best work by far for Oscar Valdez early on. Oh, oh that was low. And the warning from Kenny Ouch. Bayless on that left hand on the belt line from Stevenson. Black. Black is not to, is be, not told. to be told. It, it is, is to unfold. Black. Blackness in food and at home. And at home. In the landscape. I love my new home. I always wanted a house with historic architecture, but it might be too Victorian. Hey, gosh, interesting hemline on this. Pants? Yes, I do believe they're called pants. Pardon me. No. Pardon me. At least Geico makes bundling my home and car insurance easy. I save so much. I have come to call upon... Just text me. Ah. While well, I'm heading up. <gasps> it's a ghost. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. It's called self-care. In the third round, Oscar Valdez landed six body punches. He had a 15 to 8 connect advantage, and he outworked Shakur Stevenson, throwing 50 punches to Stevenson's 38. Like I said in the beginning, Tess, if you're Team Valdez, you want to go into that seventh round down 4-2 or even at 3-3. That's when you turn on the gas because in big championship fights that are evenly matched, the fight doesn't start until the second half of the fight anyway. 
Dre, the 15 punches landed by Oscar Valdez in that third round against Shakur Stevenson, that ties the high for the most landed on Shakur Stevenson in his career. This is a fighter who has a 3.3 to 1 ratio in punches landed compared to punches absorbed. His opponents average only five per round. Valdez had success, Timmy, as you said, because he was taking angles, he was inching closer, and most importantly, he was going to the body. That's where it's at. Valdez right now is getting caught at that mid-range. No man's land. He has to do something at that range right here. Give Shakur something to look at, so that way he can inch his feet closer. So holy. If Valdez can't let Shakur tee off like that, he's piling up points, and a big shot might get through at some point in time, either to the head or to the body, so he's got to watch that. Mm. Head class right there. This is exactly where he needs to be right here. That's the range for Valdez. That's the style for Valdez. And even if Valdez isn't landing cleanly, you can't tell that to every judge sitting yep. around that ring. The yep. crowd is on his side. They scream every time he throws. Even if he misses, some judges are scoring some, some punches that are missing. And some judges are scoring the fact that Oscar Valdez is coming forward, being the aggressor. But then Valdez allows Shakur Stevenson to yep. take away the play in moments like this. This is a big mistake. Valdez doesn't want to be down 5-1 going into the seventh round. Just these last 20 seconds alone, to your point, as Stevenson peppers with the jab, comes with the backhand, and has sustained success. Look at that jab. Stevenson has to remain focused all night long. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna, I was well, he's jousting and range finding sometimes with that right hand out in front. So Valdez just pulled on it. Yeah, that's legal. I ain't never that's seen legal. that before. <laughs> he pulling out everything. See that sequence right there showing me that Valdez is trying to punch and get away at the same time. He's got to commit offensively because when he's hesitant, Shakur can feel that. When he's resolute, Shakur can feel that as well. Well, that hesitancy came through over the course of the last minute and a half and clearly an edge for Stevenson down the stretch of this round. Stevenson round. Shakur Stevenson has thrown 120 jabs through four rounds as we begin round number five. But sometimes, Dre, that southpaw right hand is just out Ooh. there like this. Yeah, if you put that, that hand in my face, I'm going to do exactly what Oscar Valdez did. In fact, I'm going to try to do a little bit more than that. You show me in the rule book where that's a foul, then we'll have a different discussion. But Shakur can't look to Bayless, he's got to make Valdez stop. You saw him look over to Kenny Bayless. By the way, Bernardo Osuna, our award-winning ringside reporter, just turned to Nevada Commission and said, what's your read? They said, it's not illegal at all, to your point. Uh-oh. Valdez is putting oh. his body in position to try to do, to land lead rights in the big left hook. The left hook is really what Valdez wants. He just can't get close enough at the moment. Dre, you've got it two rounds apiece. I see it three to one. Round number five here. Stevenson a 49 to 35 connect advantage. No, I don't have it even. That's it. That's it. That's not accurate. I have a 3-1 Shakur Stevenson. Okay. 3-1 Shakur Stevenson. As is seemingly obvious. So three to one Shakur Stevenson. Disregard what you saw on the graphic. Oh, Shakur Stevenson said he got dog in him. That's what he told us. I told you he's gonna have to bring it out tonight. He's going to have to show he got dog in him because Oscar Valdez is going to be here all night long, people. But we think dog is taking punches, fellas. Sometimes dog is dominating the fight. Sometimes dog is making sure that I'm not allowing you to do what you want to do. I'm taking away your greatest strengths and exploiting all your weaknesses and looking you dead in your face while I do it. That's dog. And then if I have to take a shot, I'll show you I can take that too. That's right. It's not just about taking punishment. It's about dominating. And that's what you see Shakur Stevenson trying to do right now. Stevenson right now, he's not using his jab. He's just trying to use that as a range finder. He's looking for the uppercut and the combinations. He he's just threw a uppercut that started a combination, Timmy. But he needs to be careful. That lead hand is down when he throws that uppercut. That left hook can sneak in there. 
Valdez up tired, closes the distance, doesn't get anything accomplished with it though. I'm not sure what he's waiting on. He knows how he's got to fight right a hand. fighter like this. You cannot stay on the outside. You have to press. You're gonna get. You're getting hit being on the outside. So why not risk getting hit trying to get your offense up? Oh, oh, that's a good left hand from Shakur Stevenson as Valdez came straight in. Shakur Stevenson filled that gap. Woo, look at the measure from Shakur Stevenson controlling the head of Valdez and coming down with the straight left hand. Wow, domination. You never know when it will hit. A spark that only happens once. A moment you don't want to miss. You can change one day, one night, or the course of history. And whether you're ready or not, this city doesn't wait. Mark Mason Footwear. Welcome to the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway. Wait, that's new. Wait, you're new too. Nobody told you? Refresh, refresh. Subway's refreshing with better ingredients, better footlongs, and better spokespeople. Because you, you gotta, gotta refresh to be fresh. Make fitness routine with pure protein. High protein, low sugar. Tastes great. High protein, low sugar. So good. High protein, low sugar. Mmm, birthday cake. And for a cheesy crunch, try pure protein snacks. You know Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance? So you only pay for what you need? Like how I customized this scarf? Check out this backpack I made for Marco. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. That was a huge round for Shakur Stevenson. The big left hand highlighted it. Let's take a look, Timmy. Yep, counter punches. They like distance so they can see the punches coming. Look at Shakur Stevenson stepping back. Straight left hand, boom. But that's the left hook right there that I'm talking about. Sometimes Valdez is going to have to take some shots so he can get a shot in there. Eddie Reynoso did not put the mouthpiece into the mouth of Oscar Valdez. Eddie Reynoso, who's also handling cuts, had to handle a small cut under the right eye of Oscar Valdez, the undefeated 31-year-old champion. Four rounds to one, Stevenson, says Andre Ward. It's a very easy one to score, and there is the knockdown opening up round six. Shakur Stevenson scores the knockdown early in round six. I think it was more Valdez being off balance than anything. He got caught with a shot and went Valdez down. needs to save all that energy that he's using to, to hit his glove together, and he needs to be trying to hit Shakur Stevenson right now. That high guard is not serving him well. There was a left uppercut that came in. Shakur very good at changing levels. Three-punch combination. Headshot comes in again from Stevenson. That oh. is still dangerous. He's still dangerous. He's still dangerous with that left hook and with that lead straight right hand. He's still dangerous. Stevenson is showing more aggression. Comfort right there, right in front, putting forth the power punches. And like I said, he's, he's walking him down now. Stevenson is walking him down now. Now he's moving backwards. Now Valdez is coming in. But and when he comes in, he catches him with that left hand. Valdez right now is looking for one shot, either the overhand right or the left hook. He's willing to take right now, so that way he can get Stevenson comfortable, so he can he's move in. Draw man to That's it. That's all he did. So he can land a big shot. That's, That's what he's it. doing. He doesn't believe he can win punch for punch anymore. Now he's reserved that the right to sit back and wait and try to land a big shot. It's risk reward to do so, but it's the only option when you look at it. As you see that cut under the right eye, you see the face reddening on Oscar Valdez. I think he could go punch for punch. He may not win every exchange, but he puts himself in a better position to pile up points, win rounds, and maybe catch Shakur. I think he's sort of checked out and was reverted to this style of fighting a little bit too early. So much at stake here. Two undefeated champions. A division that has only had five unification fights in history going back to the late 1960s. A division that has had all the great names either sit atop it or come through it. And now Shakur Stevenson in position to deliver on putting a big notch in his belt and defining his legacy. Scored the knockdown early on here in round six. Keep that foot on. Right? 
This is the knockdown. You see. Nice little hook right there. That is a knockdown. No doubt. No no doubt about it. A punch lands and the ropes him held him up. He was off balance, coming forward. See his inertia brought him forward right there. The ropes were there. Then he got hit with a nice short him. lead up and went Don't down. The when you went down, you were off balance. You were doing well up until that point in the first round. You got to move your waist. Okay? Come on. Ready, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Eddie Reynoso and Team Valdez obviously concerned here as we start the back half of this unification fight between the two undefeated world champions. Shakur Stevenson is landing 47% of his power punches. Stop, sit back, sit Those back, are the power punches back, in the last back. round, an 18 to 2 advantage, including the hook that scored the knockdown early on. You ask a Valdez, you got to believe in yourself. You've already proven that you're a warrior. You've already proven you can fight fire with fire. This is the biggest moment of your life and your career. This is not the time to sit back and allow a fighter like Shakur to pick you apart round after round with minimal resistance. If you're going to go out, like he's always said, go out on your shield, go out trying to win, not trying to survive. I don't like the body language right now, and I do not like the game plan from Oscar Valdez. It's a master class right now from Shakur Stevenson. That's what you're seeing. A master class boxing performance. A clinic. Look at the defense right there, how he steps around. Then he steps in close. I see the body shots right there. That's fine, but he caught a lot of that on his arm. Now when you get outside, you see Stevenson poking, picking, and the combinations will come flying right down the middle. Oh, oh he places the left uppercut as Valdez came in. Good shot right there from Oscar. Oh, there he is. That's it right there. Oscar wakes up for a moment. Andre, you have said now for a couple rounds, that's the disposition you need to see. He's got to have it. He's not avoiding punches because he's being defensive. He's still getting hit. So if you're getting hit, why don't you try to get off yourself and land some punches, and you might just land the one you need. And then look what he does. He gets right back at the end of Shakur's punches. And if you're in the corner of Stevenson, you tell him, keep doing what you're doing, but be mindful. Stay sharp. This fight isn't over yet. You see the speed, the footwork of Stevenson, able to get away from those two offensive surges from Valdez. One knockdown, one punch that buzzes Shakur can revitalize Oscar Valdez. Stevenson cannot allow that to happen. That's called probing. The reason why the ref is warning is because he's leaving it out there. He can't leave it out there. He can flick it out there, but he can't leave it out there on the head of Valdez. There's a difference between the pawn jab, the range finding jab, and that joust probe. So the warning from Bayless. Valdez, here he comes trying to cut off that ring again, trying to take those short angles to get to the kitchen, get to the inside, where he fires off to the belt line, and then the break from Bayless. This will be the last commercial break we take, and then we bring you home all the way to the conclusion. Buffalo Wild Wings win-win value lineup gives you and your friends more for less. With buy one, get one half off traditional wings every Tuesday. Buy one, get one free boneless wings every Thursday. And $3 tolls every day. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. Yo, you know we're not shooting threes, right? Definitely not shooting threes. Introducing Gatorlight. Rapid rehydration, plus a specialized blend of five electrolytes. See you, Lark. Wait. Watch out. Gatorlite. Rapid rehydration. All G. Oh, I've travelled all over, telling folks they could save by bundling home and car insurance. But here's the real secret. Eye contact. We just had a moment. Geico. <laughs> Doritos flaming hot on Beto's wings. Now that's fire. They won't be here long, though, just like the playoffs. Speaking of, shouldn't you be focused right now? I am focused. I'm watching film, I'm eating wings. Let me live. Clay, was that a shimmy? <laughs> what is most obvious as we start this eighth round 
is how relaxed and unaffected Shakur Stevenson is between rounds. How comfortable he is. How unaffected he has been with this fight so far in total command and control. He listens to his grandfather. He listens to his co-trainer, Kay Karoma. He takes his water, and then he gets off the stool with 10 seconds still to go to then go out and continue with the strategy. A strategy, Tim Bradley, that you have described as a master class to this point. That's what it is right now. You know, I'm getting a lot of credit to ask about this. He's trying. He's trying to get close, but it's hard when you're facing a guy that understands distance. Every time you take a step forward, he takes a step back. Anytime you swing a shot, you miss majority of your punches. It's demoralizing. It's frustrating. It's not like Valdez ain't trying. He's trying. The distance from where Valdez is on the outside to where he actually needs to be probably feels like about five miles right now. That's what it feels like when you're facing a guy who knows how to box and who understands distance and range and who, and who has cat quick reflexes, not just with his hands, but also with his feet. Speed is a huge advantage for Shakur, and it has materialized right from the start. And, and not only that, I mean, you got to put on top of that. Psychologically, when you can't get to a guy, that's draining. You got to think about, he's been coming forward for the first round. He's been pressing forward for the first time, round. And on top of that, he's getting hit. So he's been drained all the way across the board. I think that little short right hook to the body got Valdez's attention from Shakur. He got hit and he held on Good right immediately. Hand. And remember, he's already banked a 10-8 round has Shakur. Nice. As if the hole isn't big enough. Knockdown was scored in cannot, round six. Right, he cannot go to sleep because nope. Valdez will be dangerous as long as this fight is going on. Oh. Placing that left hand to the body. Three punch combination up top. Valdez trying to get to the inside behind that peekaboo high guard. Look at that. So calculated. All those punches right there. Nothing really land right there. Cleanly from Valdez. Neither fighter has been visibly hurt thus far in this fight. Stunned maybe, but not visibly hurt. Oh, there's a right hand to the body from the former Mexican Olympian, the two-time Olympian for Mexico. Oh, Valdez trying to time that left hook. Let's listen in. But he's touching you with punches. Remember how we train, you gotta go with the lower hand right. And both hands. Don't look just for the right hand over the top. You gotta go to the bottom seat. You got four more rounds. You got condition for this. Just be careful with the guard. Encouraging Oscar Valdez as his great friend and the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Canelo Alvarez, looks on. We start round number nine. Two undefeated champions unifying here at 130 pounds. Power punches Stevenson a 96 to 64 advantage and efficient and productive, landing 47%. I think if Shakur commits to the body a little bit more, he can even do more damage at this point. And that does mean oh. he'll be in range for the punches of Oscar Valdez, but he can put himself in a position to do more damage and possibly hurt Oscar. See, that's great right hand down to the body. That's going to set up something at the top. You're going you're gonna to bring the hands down. Shakur's going to have to defend against that. And then if you drop low, he might think a body shot is coming. But then if you come up top, you can surprise him. Setting the trap. The problem for Valdez is it's too little and it's too infrequent. You lit, 
a guy like Oscar Valdez, excuse me, you let a guy like Shakur Stevenson think a master boxer, that's the worst thing you can do. It's the worst thing you can do because he's already a master chess player. And you let that guy think and start making two and three moves up ahead, you got big problems. I'll tell you, I had another thing, Dre. The power of Shakur. They say he ain't got no power. Do you see Valdez just walking straight in? No. He got his hands up and he don't want to get hit with shots. He's trying not to get hit with shots. That's the reason why he's not selling out. Good right hand. What about this? Two punch combination that finishes with the left to the body from Shakur. Then Ooh, the left nice uppercut. Up he has been that looking to time that a few times in recent rounds. That hurt him. Clean left uppercut from Shakur Stevenson to the jaw of Oscar Valdez. And he's leaning forward. Look at how much of a forward lean on Oscar Valdez. That head goes over that front knee. You are primed to get hit with an uppercut. Well, uppercut Shakur has probably been working on that shot for the last eight weeks. That and angle to the right by a southpaw. And the left hand goes to the body easily. There's another left hand from Shakur. He hurt him again with that shot, fellas. Stood him straight up with a straight left. Oscar needs to let his hands go, or this can start to turn real ugly real quick. Oh, He's will. getting outboxed. He's getting pop shot at right now, but he can start to get hurt, and Kenny Bayless can start looking to stop this fight if he allows those kind of shots to land. Too frequent. Oh, oh look at that. Going underneath with the left hand to the body. After he avoided two or three shots. A strong ninth round for Shakur Stevenson. And another body punch. Check out these left hands from Shakur Stevenson. Boom, do you believe in magic? Well, I do slate of hand. He got him to look at the jab and came down and stole his lunch down to the body. There it is again. Go ahead and look at that jab, and I'm going to come around with my left hand. Oh, you want to come in and attack? No problem. I'll step back and catch you straight in with a straight left hand down the middle. Oh, you want to come in wide? No problem. That's another one. Take another left hand down the pipe. Beautiful work by Shakur Stevenson. Master class performance at the moment. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Look at how calm and look yep. at how early he comes off the stool. Not to even go out there and wait. This is the start of the tenth round, and he's been doing this nonstop all night. Gonna get my water. Yeah, he's sending Gonna a message listen. to Oscar Valdez. Yeah, he's playing mind games. He's letting him know that man, I'm not tired, and I'm gonna beat you off the stool as often as I can. I think it's been a very easy fight to score. Dre, you have it in dominating fashion for Shakur Stevenson. As there is a rally from Valdez, but not much gets in. He's going to have to completely sell out here in these last three rounds. I mean, he's trying. He's trying. No doubt about that. But he's in there with, a, with an elusive fighter. It's difficult to land on this guy, Shakur Stevenson. Keep in mind, in Oscar Valdez, you have a guy who struck the knockout of the year last year in boxing, his sensational KO of Miguel Burchelt, the world champion who had the famed green belt, the WBC belt. But it is a far departure of styles between Burchelt and Stevenson. See, that was good combinations right there with the same hand, right hand coming around down to the body, upstairs, and then a straight right hand once again. By Valdez. Reaching for a right hand. Great combination right there again down to the body. From Valdez. Oscar Valdez only has a shot to win or land a big shot if he throws. Standing there and blocking punches won't do it. He throwing, Dre. He throwing. He in there throwing. He going down to the body. He's trying to land something. 
Shakur backs him up. There's a body shot again. He's finishing to the body well on the three punch combinations. This is the low round, I believe, for Shakur Stevenson. Not a whole lot of offense right now coming back. Occasionally, he'll counter. But I'm seeing more punches right now land for Oscar Valdez. That straight right hand continuously landing over and over and over. There it is again. Digs into the body. That right hand nearly straight low. Stevenson follows him straight back. Three more punches. Then places that jab to the body. Lead left hand. Valdez can't get the good work that he's done this whole round away in this next 25 seconds. He's got to finish strong. He got Shakur sitting still. That's what he that's where he wants him. He needs Shakur to sit still. Beautiful distance right there. Right hand and right hand again. Great round for Oscar Valdez. And now the championship rounds will arrive. And we want to remind you that you can join us on the ESPN app for the State of Boxing. That is our post-fight exclusive show. All the interviews, all the analysis, everything you need to know. Just stay with us on the app. We'll take you deep into the evening on Valdez Stevenson. We're gonna, we gonna make sure, all right? Start running them numbers on it. And put, every time you finish your numbers, put the jab right back on. Get run into it, all right? What do you see? Hard jab. Again and again. Relax, barely breathing, off the stool early. He did a nice job around that right eye of Valdez. There was a cut that surfaced in the fifth round. Has never been an issue. Here we go. Championship rounds to decide who will be the unified champion. Who will walk out of here with two belts and still undefeated. Total punches through 10. 148, 87 connect advantage. Shakur. Mark Kriegel, what say you? Shakur hasn't merely controlled the distance. He's controlled the level of violence. He came out, wanted to show he's got more dogs than anyone said he did. He does, and they'll stand him in good stead if this holds. It'll bring him into superstardom. And I just spoke with Eddie Reynoso, and he says the problem with Oscar right now is he continues to miss the right hand from the same range. Oh. He can't be at Shakur's range. He's either got to get inside or be out. That was a mean combination yes, right there. Took one to the head, took one to the body, took another one back to the head. Changing levels with each punch. Shakur's comfortable right now on the inside. He's not, he's not worried about the power right now. He feels those punches on the glove. You know, we as fighters, we feel the power. He feels Valdez weakening. Those shots are not as hard as they once were. That's the reason why he ain't running back. He ain't moving. He's right in front of Oscar Valdez. Shakur has been comfortable since the third round. He timed Oscar, felt his power, felt his physical strength, and was okay with what he felt. This 11th round is taking on a matador kind of quality. Yes, it is. The question I have is can Shakur find a way to finish in a way that puts an exclamation point on the night? to leave no doubt that he is the next oh star in this quarter boxing. Wow, that combination did damage. Hard warning by Kenny Bayless admonishing Shakur for the probing and the resting out the jab. He is up so high on the scorecards, though, right now. Trey, to your point, Stevenson discussed that with us just 24 hours ago. Obviously, if you simply win this fight, it is a major, major notch on the belt to be a unified champion, to launch into the pound-for-pound -pound rankings, and to have your status in the sport established on the star line, in the bright lights of the marquee. But how you could close it out could be the rocket ride to superstardom. Right now, Oscar has him right where he wants him, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Let's see how this plays out. Shakur wants this fight to be right here. 
Oscar is having a little success in the inside, going down to the body, but Shakur wants this type of fight. Absolutely dominated that 11th round. His high punch output of the night comes in round number 11. How do you feel? Good. Take a deep breath, relax. You gotta throw punches here. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside MGM Grand Garden Arena, we go to the 12th and final round. Two very different faces as they head out to touch him up for the 12th round. So this will decide it. Three minutes. Two men who came in undefeated. One who is in complete control to grab all the glory. Oscar Valdez has to come up with something. Has to cash that lottery ticket. Dre, how could he possibly do it, seeing how much in command Stevenson is? He's got to throw whatever game plan he had the last 11 rounds out the window. He's got to throw. He's got to throw until the last bell rings, and he's got to hope and pray that something lands. But he has landed, and it hasn't been enough. Oscar Valdez, I don't want to say he's in an impossible situation, but he's really close to being in that position because he's had no answers for anything that Shakur Stevenson has brought to the table. There was a right hand that went low moments ago. You saw Shakur's reaction to Kenny Bayless. Has to close that gap as Shakur circles on the outside. Shows a little shuffle. By the way, he grew up on Ali Boulevard in Newark, New Jersey. One of nine children. Seven boys, two girls. And his mother, Malika, named him after the iconic rapper, Shakur Stevenson. Said Tupac was her poet. And now her son is about a minute and a half away from being one of the new kings of the sport. He has been on a steady ascent. Mm, look at that inside work right there. Beautiful work inside. Short, crisp, right hook by Shakur Stevenson. Shakur right now is kind of letting off the gas right now. I'm waiting on some offense to come back right now. Maybe he's trying to recharge. Maybe he's going to give it a little bit more in the next. There it is. Like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shouldered him up, walked him into the ropes, and two punches later, statement made. That's right. He Shakur walked him right into the, those two, three punch combination. He just, he just walked him right into it. Oscar Valdez relaxed. He thought Shakur was going to relax with him, and Shakur had, had other plans. Oscar Valdez has been a great champion who has had a career where he has ascended a jagged cliff's edge. There has been drama overcome. There has been glory in the ring. He has seen the highest heights. He has heard the lowest lows of the critics. And now he has a half a minute remaining of being an undefeated champion unless he comes up with something and hits the jackpot. Shakur Stevenson. Seconds oh. away from a signature win. He looks up at the clock. As Valdez hopelessly chases, Shakur Stevenson has done it.
you go through the history of the sport, so many greats have come through this division, the junior lightweights. Be it Azuma Nelson or Chavez, be it Barrera or Mayweather or Pacquiao. And now in just moments, when we come back from this break, Shakur Stevenson will hear his name as a unified champion. Don't go away. No Tessator with the decision. Top Ranked Boxing on ESPN is brought to you by GEICO. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. Let's hear from the judges. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds, here inside the MGM Grand Garden Arena, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Tim Cheatham scores the bout 117-110. Dave Moretti and Davis Sutherland both score the bout 118-109 for your winner by unanimous decision. And now the WBC, WBO, and Ring Magazine Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Shakur Stevenson! He will gladly play the role of heel in front of these fans who are rooting on, many of them rooting on Valdez. He did indeed silence them. A big crowd came out to see unification, and now they have a unified champ. Bernardo. Shakur, first unified champion since 2005 in the junior lightweight division. What does this victory mean to you? Hey, this, mean, this victory mean everything. I told y'all what I was gonna do. I said I'm gonna be Valdez, Canelo, and Eddie Reynoso. That was my game plan. Beat the whole team, and I feel good about it. Much respect to them, no disrespect to them, but that was my game plan. Did Oscar Valdez bring out the best in you, and how did he bring out the best? Oh, most definitely. Uh, Oscar Valdez is a tough champion. I don't take nothing away from him. He got good power, he's rough, rugged, and he'll be a champion after, after this. <laughs> So you say after this, and everybody wants to know what the next step is. You've got two of the belts and the lineal ring magazine belt. I got the next step. Hey, Julie, can I see some? Julie. <laughs> He's getting. Hey, Larry, I love you. And will you marry me? <laughs> that is Lyric, his long time. Partner, girlfriend, and mother to Lilana. The Rodolfo. answer is yes. A huge night for Shakur Stevenson as he proposes to Lyric, the mother of his daughter. And now Shakur, a big moment for you, a huge night for you. Was this the birth of a superstar? Yes, I'm a superstar in this sport. You line them up, name them. Uh, I'm ready for whoever. I'm ready for whoever. You were naming names before because you had Oscar Valdez as your target. What's your target now? Uh, anybody, any of the champions. Uh, I might go collect all the belts at 130, become undisputed. Um, I deserve to be a superstar, so this is what I got to do. Devin Haney's in the house. To be, he's going to be fighting George Cambosis in Australia. Is that a step up for you in the future? Uh, most definitely. Uh, Devin is definitely a huge fight for me. Um, Devin is a hell of a fight. I got nothing but respect and love for Devin. But we're, uh, we could line it up in the future, too. Thank you very much, Shakur. Devin Haney will be fighting for the Undisputed Lightweight Championship on ESPN on June 4th in Australia. Shakur Stevenson says, I'm a superstar. I deserve it. He dominated Oscar Valdez, first unified junior lightweight world champion since Marco Antonio Barrera. He put on a show, and you get the feeling it's going to be years and years of this with Shakur Stevenson. Let's get your sports center. We'll be on the app for the post fight show. This is Sports.